Good morning everyone. I hope you are doing well. It is Saturday morning here so I am going to say yay to the weekend. had a really deep sleep last night after a very eventful week both um, with everything that was happening with Alex um, and also just it was a crazy busy week back at work after being away on holidays. So I wanted to pop on and share what I'm thinking for the next Roxy Journal of Stitchery down the garden path with the prompt of flower pots or pots with flowers in them. So as per usual, I tend to not just be able to do like a really simple little pot and go, hey, I'm done. I like to create a bit of a scene because the piece I'm creating has a range of different um, scenes of things in the garden. So for this one, I'm thinking of going with a bit of a garden show theme and having um, yeah, a little bit of a festive vibe, nice, beautiful sort of pastel um, colours, lots of florals, obviously, for the, the flower pots. So that's, that's the vibe. And because I added a glass house structure with birds and butterflies and bees i'm thinking of creating a bit of a um a shed but a sort of a glam shed display shed um she shed sort of structure so let's have a look at what i've got out so i'm going to use a base piece which i've measured um and it's just again from the reverse art truck so just a fabric sample but I like the slightly um, sort of heavier pieces to use as my backing because I find then the um, pieces don't pucker as I stitch them. Now I've got this fabric, which was called Gardenia. Um, and I've actually saved the little Gardenia label off the, the selvage, um, which I'm thinking I will incorporate into the piece as well. But it's got sort of broad brush pieces of um, flowers on it but then these beautiful sort of greens and, and blues so I just took a section of the the greens and and blues with a little bit of the red off this this end um, I'm not sure where this fabric came from it might have come from an op shop or yeah it probably is an op shop piece I think definitely vintage so I thought that can be the top of it and I'm going to need a bit of room, so I'll probably have the top section sort of, um, yeah, go off because this fabric won't have much stitching on it. And then I've got a, another piece from the reverse art truck that I've um, cut out as a bit of a roof for my structure. So in fact, do I want the... Just thinking I probably... Oh, I suppose the red's okay. Red could be something in the garden. Or whether I just bring that, I might actually have this go most of the way up. And then again, I've got some upholstery samples. And I've cut one of them to kind of be the, the sort of guttering or something on the, the roof. Hopefully you can see all of that up there. I think you can. <clears throat> and so then for my little she shed sort of display shed i got a delivery that i'd actually forgotten that i'd got um from the sewing lair um because i'd bought stuff over a few weeks before before holidays um and then got it sent um of this and this just arrived yesterday in the post um and it's a beautiful patchworky style fabric with um sort of muted pale pinks um, sort of bluey teals, yellows, greys. So I thought that was really lovely. Feels nice too. Probably does need a little iron. Um, and I thought I might use that as my sort of inside of my she shed, but it's going to be like an open shed, I guess, with the doors sort of slid open. It's how I'd have my she shed if I had one of them. So I'm thinking... I will do a, I can either at, overlap it underneath or I'll just need to get a nice little um, join on it. But then I think at the sides of the page, I will actually um, fold these fabrics, these fabrics under so that um, I don't have the raw edge on the side where it might start to fray. So something, something like this 
bit ago. In fact, it might even be able to go up a little bit higher. I might do that actually. Probably should actually pin this piece down as well as I go. I might even put that just a bit higher just to make sure I've got enough room when we get to the get to the bottom. Let's get my pins out. Time to start pinning. I think I've got the, the broad gist of what I want to do. I had a bit of time last night at the end of the week. I was feeling very tired, but I thought, no, I'll just have a play around. I didn't have the didn't have the words or the energy to actually pop the video on. You probably would have got a bit of an incoherent mess. Not that I'm not always an incoherent mess. Sometimes when I even make a video when I'm not tired. Okay. Oops, where's my pins gone? There they are. So I hope you're all having a great weekend. If your weekend has started, I know in some parts of the world it might still be not quite fully fledged weekend yet. Although probably by the time I post this and you get to watch it, it probably will be. I should probably should put that on the other side just so I don't lose lose the pin in my stitching. I was watching um, Corinne from To Be Loved Treasures by Corinne. Um, and yeah, she had to get a pin out from within her piece. It was hiding under her beautiful stitching on one of her many, many pieces. So they can be sneaky, those little pins. Okay. So I reckon that's a good go for that. And then... Maybe we will actually... No, because if I do that... Sorry, I'm thinking aloud and not really explaining what I'm thinking. But... How, that, how will this work if we have that bit sitting on this, which will join it? And then actually, well, that needs to go on there. So something like that should work, I think. And again, um, as I've said in previous videos, I haven't yet worked out the sequence that all these pieces are going to go oops, together in um, because I'll work that out at the end once I've got them. And then I can kind of think about how the pieces sequence at that point. And there might be some more bits and pieces that get added in as I, as I join them together. That is if they do stay with the idea of being a um, big wall hanging, which will probably stretch down the entire length of the wall from upstairs to, to downstairs I think based on the the way things are going so it will be interesting because we've still got a lot of time left where, where are we now we've just come into into March so we've still got April May and June worth of prompts I mean this one could have been a much smaller prompt I could have just done a pop in one of my other other scenes but I thought nope I want to do something a little bit more elaborate. Now, I wonder down the bottom, I probably should also turn that under actually. Can you still, hopefully you can see down the bottom, just to avoid having that raw edge. good having the grid design on the, the fabric because I'm not having to try and sort of work out where the where a straight line is. Always struggle with my straight lines if I'm doing it freehand, which in slow stitching it doesn't really matter. You don't have to be don't have to be perfectly straight. It's not the aim of the game or the name of the game. So it's gonna be a hot day again here in Melbourne. We've been getting some quite cool weather so we all pulled out the the warmer clothes. I'd started one of the days this week. I'd pop some some shorts on to take the dog for his morning walk, and then when I got home, it was it was fine. When I was walking, because we keep up quite a rapid pace as we make our way around the neighbourhood. Um, Travis, yeah, always is on the the go quite quickly in the morning because he knows that when he gets home, he gets his his little second breakfast. He's a spoiled pooch. His first breakfast of the day is wheat bix with some um, some milk. Wheat Bix, if you don't have them overseas, are a breakfast cereal. It's like a block of um, compressed sort of wheat flakes, I guess. So 
so they look like a little um, yeah a little rectangular block um, and quite firm um, but when you add the milk they soften up and absorb the milk but they're meant to be a pretty healthy um, breakfast for for humans but our um, our vet who we've started seeing this year with Travis um, We've been on the lookout for an actual sort of vet that we want to see over the long term. We'd only ever pre before that been to um, a variety of vets, but we found a good one. And he said, yeah, um, Wheat Bix is a very good breakfast for pups. And he also recommends um, feeding pups um, vegetables and um, meat. So I hand prepare all of Travis's food now. But Travis also for breakfast gets some vegetables and an egg as well which keeps his coat super shiny. People always comment on how shiny our little, our little boy Travis is. Um, okay, I'm getting distracted and not actually doing things. I'm just patting the, the piece of fabric, which will not get it assembled. So let's put a pin in here as well. So for then the um, bottom of the piece, I am thinking of using this piece of fabric, which I have. I think I've actually got a bigger section of it, but this was just in my little bag of um, pieces to use. Excuse me. <coughs> oh. Morning tickles. Time for a little gulp of coffee, I think. Ah. Coffee is good. I only let myself have one coffee, but I will sometimes refill it because um, it's quite a strong brew that I make. And then as I'm drinking it down, I might just add some more water and some, some milk for the calcium. So, I might actually, as I think about it, might make good sense to, again, to avoid the, um, the edges, to put this edge under, under here. I don't know which way this fabric needs to go up. I don't think it really matters too much which way it goes. But we might just put this piece, take those ends out, put this piece there. Fold this piece back. A lot of folding under going on today. But yeah, having little sharp pins is definitely good as long as you don't stab yourself with them, then they're not so good. I was laughing when Leanne from Leanne's Crafty Cupboard um, this week, she was um, saying that she'd got um, some new needles. We should, I think, go on to a stitching circle or a little crafting club. And yeah, she'd forgotten her needles and so she got some new needles. And yeah, so it was amazing how easy they made the, the stitching process, except for when you actually stab yourself with one of them. So speaking of Leanne, I was watching last night while I was feeling very tired, but having a play around it with this piece, watching an amazing video that she has just released, showing um, some work she did using ink tense pencils um, that then become like a watercolor when water's added to them. I don't have ink tense, but I've seen quite a few people um, using them. They look like a great, great product for the arty folks. Um, and so she used those to colour in a sort of overlapping um, circle design and then did lots of different stitching with beautiful variegated pastel thread over the, the top of it. So definitely check out um, Leanne's Crafty Cupboard. Great things are there. Now I'm thinking I will put in some posts. So again, I might still need to keep moving my moving my needles as we go. So I might just tuck this one, tuck the top up here, I think. So I can maybe put the pin like that. Oops. Now hopefully you can still see up there. Yeah, I think you can. I think you can. That was one great video I watched last night. I also watched the lovely Corinne um, and she and Susanna from Vintage Blend Studio have released their 
um, Easter project video, the first of the one in the series. I haven't actually seen Suzanne's yet. I'm going to check that out today from the Vintage Blend Studio. Um, hopefully it's online. It didn't um, immediately pop up um, when I saw Corinne's one. Um, but they're doing a new project for Easter of making a pattern called Hendrick, H-E-N-D-R-I-C-K possibly. Um, so someone's designed this pattern of this giant I'm going to say giant, he is big, he is a big boy, a big hair, um, and they're using it using a fabric panel that they got from French General, um, as well as other fabrics also, and they are, sorry I just noticed my top's unbuttoned, hopefully you can't, hopefully you can't see down to my, my belly, that would not be a pleasant, pleasant view, um, they're using that panel to yeah to make the pieces for or to decorate um Andric. they're using calico for the actual sort of base of um Andric. well Karine is as i say i haven't yet watched um susanna's video and then they're going to put patches and um embellishment over it but it looks like a very big project corinne has been trying to enable me and encourage me to <laughs> to get on board but i think i've got enough projects and i've got a few ideas of things i want to do um, for Easter this year. It's going to be a particularly special Easter because we're going to have my um, nephews, niece and my brother and sister-in-law joining us from Western Australia. So from for those overseas, that's from a, another state quite a, a long distance away. Um, and we haven't, because of um, COVID and everything, haven't been able to see them. Um, and I have almost ended up with a pin lost in my piece here so I might just get that out I wonder if I've got one yep I have got one stuck all the way under here so I'm actually gonna have to just get that out before I go any further otherwise that will not be fun it will not be fun at all so in fact maybe while I do that I will either put this in here it's hard when you're kind of layering up your pieces because Oops. You end up with that risk of having um, needles overlapping. Oh, not needles, pins, 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 pins. Okay, there we go. So we're going to tuck this one under as well. Again, lots of tucking. It's like origami like slow stitch origami we're going to call it when we're tucking layers upon layers under each other layering up to create a, a structure so yeah it's interesting for this project for Roxy's I've tended to do more sort of I guess pictorial scenes so less of the more scrappy sort of style of um, slow stitch still obviously using fabric scraps but using sort of larger sections of them but if you've um, been watching my videos, I posted um, two videos where I'm doing a beehive stitchery that I picked up in the Bright Op Shop while on holidays. It was only just started and I was like, oh, that's sad to leave it in a partially finished state when it's such a beautiful little, little embroidery. So I finished that off and then I've done a scrappy um, background around it. I think I'm going to move the roof down a smidgeroo. Very precise measurement of smidgeroo is. I reckon that will work quite well. So let's might even take it down and smidgeroo more. Will that work? Just don't want to have any gaps in my piece. So I think that will be good. Let's put a pin up here where it will be safe, and maybe one more over here. And then put one there Oops. maybe not quite down so far I think I've actually got it a little bit too far across I mean we can fix this all when we come to sew but it's best to get it right as you as you go again doesn't have to be perfect though let's not become perfectionists as we stitch music out my window I don't know where it's coming from maybe someone's just got the music on 
on loud while they start their Saturday off? I don't know. Unless there's a bit of a... I'm actually not sure I can hear someone singing. Unless someone is actually singing, that would be nice. But maybe someone's just got the radio on loud somewhere. Could be my partner downstairs, who knows. Oops, let's just move another smidgery. Almost there. Sorry, a bit of fiddling around on just getting this to where I want it. Let's try not to stab myself. Just need to make sure that this piece goes down far enough. And let's try not clip to the under underlying piece on the table either. <laughs> At least it's a quilt that sort of sits um, yeah, flat against the table, so that should be okay. And like that. Then I was thinking I'm going to put this little, this was the bit that came off the selvage um, of the fabric, the fabric I've used up here that was called Gardenia. Thought we might call our little shed, it might have its own name. So I thought we might put that sort of tucked in there. Gardenia for the garden. Now, in our shed, I am thinking we are going to have a banner, I think. And in fact, I've just noticed I was draw I was writing on it just to have a test, but I'm going to use my hair dryer to do the hairdryer because it's I don't have to put it on to, to warm up but uh, that removes the friction pilot marker when you write on it and I'd just done a practice write um, before I joined on here I think I've just blown one of my little um, pots off the table so I'll just try and find where that's where that has blown to I can't see it unless it's stuck to the back of something else otherwise we'll have to make another another pot if we've lost a pot a pot might have gone flying I don't know I don't know where that pot has got. Oh no, there it is. It just flew partially off the table. That would be the only downside of using a hairdryer if you've got loose, loose fabrics on your table. So, I'm just gonna write, I want this to be a banner that sits across the top of my piece announcing the garden show. And I'm thinking I'll put 2023 garden show so we know the year when I have made this piece. I wonder if I wanna use the bright side or the more sort of muted side for the banner. I might use the more muted side, I think. So let's just write 20. And again, this pen, I can remove it if we get the wrong sort of, if we make a mess, we can come back and remove it and have another go. 2023, wouldn't it be funny if I got the wrong year? That would mean I'm very relaxed. My brain has gone to sleep. I can't believe it's March though. I know I know we all say that every year. But I can't believe it's March already. Are you feeling the same? Are you feeling time flies by? 2023 garden show. Do you like I'm writing on the top of my to-do list, which ha has start today, the list, and it's absolutely blank because today I'm giving myself the day off. I am going to do what I feel like doing. I do have to do some washing though, actually. Um, it's going to be a beautiful, good day for drying because it's been a bit cool this week. I haven't done my, haven't done my wash. So there we go. We have 2023 garden show. So that can go across. Now we might, I think, tuck the ends when we stitch it on under, under these pieces, I think. I think that might be the go. And we can trim those off as well um, when we come to stitch it on, I think. And then this piece needs to be tucked under that piece. A lot of um, layers to get in the right order when we come to to stitch them but let's let's just get that pinned down for now 
uh, we work out our, our composition. But yeah, I think that will fit quite nicely across there. Pull that a bit more on this side, across here. There's definitely someone singing outside. I don't know if you can hear it. Maybe someone's going to do Australian Idol or something. Um, okay, I'm just seeing how far up you can see up to that there. Now, can you see the bottom of it? I think you can see most of the bottom. Okay, but let's work inside here on what we want to have. So I have this fabric that I got in my early stitching days that I don't think I've actually used for anything yet. And it had, um, it's 100% cotton screen prints and then it's got a number. So if you want the number, it is DSN hash R1442. And it's got all these beautiful little flower pot designs on it so I thought hey flower pot prompt I have to use this because they're all on different colors I wasn't quite sure how to incorporate them in because if they're in a garden it wouldn't kind of make total sense that they have different colors behind them so I thought we might put them as little pictures on the wall almost like little pictures of honor of um, famous flowerings that we've had in our down the garden path garden so they would be little pictures on the wall and I might even end up putting little um, like little sort of hanging hanging things on them when I stitch them stitch them down and I thought I um, originally I was thinking oh maybe I match them exactly in the print of the patchwork but I think I'll actually stagger them so they get different um, colors around them so something something like that and then um, I've used just some tiny little fabric samples I had from the reverse art truck. Um, can't quite see at the side of my desk where those little fabric samples have gone. But again, they were just little squares. I did get some larger pieces of this, but I also just got some little squares. And it's a lovely cotton and it's from Italy. Um, it might be, no, it's definitely just a, just a cotton. doesn't have any linen, but just lovely little floral designs. So I'm planning to have those sitting somewhere over here. I might have them graduating in size, I think. Is that not the right way? Yep. So I don't think they blend in too much with the background, but they love they just fit really well with having a beautiful a beautiful she shed um, with beautiful things in it. Now Corinne um, inspired me with the crinoline, I think they're called crinoline ladies, um, and she incorporated one of them in one of her pieces. And I did get a piece recently which had a green crinoline or a number of green crinoline ladies on it, an apron as well. And then I remembered last night that I had this um, purple apron that I had got earlier as well with crinoline ladies on it. So I just unpicked this one from over here and it was really simple because it just had as you can see just little stitches around um, stitching it on um, the harder part to remove and that in fact you can't remove because it's actually done onto the edging is this beautiful little um, crocheted multicolored edging so I guess when I come to use that in something I'll actually take off a bit of the the purple fabric with that as well but I didn't feel bad um, pulling this apart because as you can see it's got a stain that hasn't come out in washing and I did get it for the purpose of using the beautiful crinoline lady. So I thought because this is a garden show she could be there in all her finery checking out what's on display in our little she shed at the garden show. So I thought we might put her sort of over and I don't mind if she pops a bit off the piece as well because if it's hanging down it's kind of interesting if the piece has some some little bits popping off it I think we need to have her hat looking looking this way um, so let's just pin her on just to get the sense of how the piece will work together and then I don't know if you can see my box of yeah this is my box of just some of my favorite buttons I have many more I have a big button box that was my Nana's with all her beautiful buttons in it and this is a selection of um, yeah beautiful buttons from Nana and others that I've collected from elsewhere. This was a piece of beading that my partner's mum gave me that she'd um, collected as part of her keen 
sewing and creating um, career and I thought I might use that to make a little a little path coming up here that the crinoline lady kind of walked up so we might just stick, pop that on there just to hold it for the time being don't know if I'll be able to get the needle back up through it hopefully I can somewhere so that's beautiful very heavy as well so but I think it'll be good because it'll hold the hold the piece down when it's all together now in our little pots you might remember that from my recent haul from the op shop in Myrtleford while we we're on holidays I got all these lovely um, some of them very old I think antique or vintage flowers so fabric flowers these ones particularly look very old but then lots of little little ones um, these ones um, I think Elizabeth Robinson um, who has a YouTube channel with great videos I've actually got one of her channel uh, one of her videos I'm looking forward to watching today um, she identified these she as velvet yeah little velvet flowers and I think these are velvet as well um, as well as I think these are probably a more more recent lavender but some of these are just yeah very old and very, very squished but I grabbed a few out last night which I've got sitting over in my lid over here and I've just um, sort of smoothed them out a bit so I thought we could use them in the pots um, so I might pop that one in there and have these ones in this bigger pot actually maybe I'll switch them up a bit those ones in there those ones in here I thought I can have a bit more height in this pot um, I've also got these ones which do need a bit of bit of straightening out but they're beautiful they almost look like a little orchid or something so you might have those sort of coming up out of the pot a bit higher and hanging over and then in this third pot um, and I thought this one I could just have sort of sitting sitting out somewhere outside of the house and then I thought potentially I could have some others um, on the on these little wall wall pieces I thought maybe something these are just some little pink buttons on a piece of wire that I could have those kind of coming up the up the side so we'll work out exactly how we do that and then for this pot, I thought I'd use this little um, sequin piece again that I got from the, the op shop, um, but then add in a range of other beautiful little flower buttons that I've got as a bit of a cluster, a cluster piece. So something a bit whimsical. So that's a beautiful button with a, a flower sort of scalloped design on it. So I've got lots of these little plastic flower buttons. bobble button, little rose, pale pink rose, little glass rose button, another one of those in yellow, oops, got this orangey one. Green button. This one, this one I think is going to be too big, so we won't use it. But it's a beautiful glass button with a sort of a floral scallop design around the outside. Um, this one reminds me of a flower. It's a little metallic button. Some of them won't sit totally straight because they've got those um, shanks on the back. Um, I've got this one that's a little ceramic button with a, a rose on it. So I thought in this pot over here I'd make a beautiful um, cluster of buttons. So that can be a button pot and then these ones can be um, the pots with the, the flowers in them. So I'll add as many buttons as I can um, sort of legitimately um, fitting in this this pot just to make it a bubbling pot and she's really then now crinoline ladies really admiring the amazing button blooms in that that pot um, I found this little one which I thought I could hang as a little little light or something up the top there 
and then I thought maybe with the roof I would put some green decorations to go with our gardenia. I'm not sure if you can see the roof. Let's just drag ourselves down a bit. Um, so probably I was thinking or unless we maybe we'll put these ones like that. Oops. I can put this flower as well. I might pop that one there for now. I did have a yellow as well. So these are um, vintage buttons from Nana's collection. So they're pretty special. Maybe we'll put just the little, little one up the top. Don't know if we need others. No, probably don't need those ones, I don't think. Um, whether we do put something. No, I think they'll just compete, so I don't think we need those. Um, do we need any other detailing? I'm not sure. For our pots, I thought if I wanted to, I could put some little rick-rack yellow across the top of them to give them the, the sense of the pots. I might, might look to do that, so I'll leave that out. <clears throat> and then while I've got it on my desk, I just have to show you this. This is super cute. It's a little box of threads. I think they're threads for stockings, most likely, because it says um, for the donna, for the lady. Um, per la vostra calze and so I think um, yeah they would have been used for mending stockings but just have a look at the size of them they are tiny and just this beautiful perfect little cardboard box of them let me just bring them up so you can have a look shiny and lovely and I will not be using them so I got that from Lucello in Melbourne and they are just so cute so I keep them on my desk to look at um, I don't know I might eventually chuck them in a frame or something with um, some stitching or something. I'm not sure, but I'm definitely not going to use them. They're too pretty. I've got these little bee um, buttons, which I might have buzzing around my my display so that it's really clear that, um, that this is an open air um, shed. So I might pop those on there. And then that will link well with my other beehive piece if I end up including that. Um, another nice little flower button but I don't know don't know where we'll end up putting that I can potentially add some other pots down in and let me just move it a little bit um, I could add some more pots down near where the path is I did cut out um, some other pots just when I was experimenting as well as some more of these these pictures so I could always put an ornate pot down here but I think there's probably enough in this this piece I think they will otherwise distract so I might save those pots and other bits and pieces to use in another one of my um, pieces. I was originally thinking I'd have the black and white pots but for me it would just be too stark with this um, this background so I'll save those ones. Just having a think is there anything else that I need to add to this? I think otherwise it is pretty much pretty much done in terms of layout and now there's just all the all the stitchery to to get it get it down and get it ready um, so I'll be embroidering obviously the 2023 garden show and stitching down all the back pieces so I might do a bit of the the boring um, just sort of tacking down and then we might come back and do some of the stitching together if that's something that you would like so take care everyone I hope you have a really lovely Saturday or whatever day it is in your part of the world and I will see you soon. In good news Alex is doing really well. He hasn't had any more um, chest pains thankfully. His blood pressure is still jump, jumping around a fair bit so yeah back to for some more testing next week back to the doctors next week but so far so good. So thank you for all your caring thoughts as well. I really really appreciate those. Take care, stay well and speak soon. Bye everyone.